Um, okay, so I think, you know, it looks like numbers are leveling off. I think we're ready to jump into it. Um, so quick review, taking a step back. Uh, I know I've already said this, we've been on for a few minutes, but for those that just joined, this is the second um, episode of a series that we're doing on creating a new program and building it into Nudge. Um, what we're kind of giving you is a systematic sort of step-by-step -step approach for how you can tackle what can be a pretty daunting and overwhelming task. If you're kind of, if you feel like you're, you're new to uh, the idea of coaching or delivering a program in an online world through digital tools, um, building out a program into a platform, um, starting, launching it, delivering it, all of those things can, can feel like, you know, a lot to wrap your head around. Um, but the payoff is massive. So if you're wondering, should I be spending my time here? Oh my God, yes. Because once you start delivering everything in one place um, and communicating in one place, then your life is a heck of a lot easier. And if you're finding success in your business and the programs that you're offering, then having the opportunity to scale in a sane way uh, in a manageable way is, is really going to be a delight. And the key to all of that though, scaling. Yes. I talked about scaling, but I don't mean automating everything. I don't mean replacing yourself. Um, I want, you know, and we want people who work with us to want to really retain that authenticity of what they're creating of the relationships they have, keeping themselves as an element of all of this. Cause this, that's how we believe that engagement, that human account accountability, all those pieces are how we believe that, you know, the things that we're teaching actually stick and become life-changing in some way for the people that you're working with. So, um, enough of, enough of my soapbox. Um, I promise I'm not just avoiding the topic because I'm scared to tackle it. Um, totally ready for this. So last week we talked about literally where to start. So if you, you know, my most terrifying thing to me in the world is the blank page. I like to write a lot and I hate starting anything. It's the worst awful. So where to start with creating a new program is, I think, you know, for me, at least one of the most daunting things. I thought Sarah said a, a very twisted thing that made me wonder about her as a human <laughs> last week when she said she actually likes the blank page. I think that may be one of the signs of being a sociopath, yeah, but you know what, we're going to ignore that for now. <laughs> uh, um, but moving on past that, for most of us, I think, not having something and trying to start from scratch is kind of terrifying. So the, the whole idea here is, is creating a system whereby you can create progress, create momentum for yourself. So last week, that first step, in case you weren't there, um, if you're kind of imagining a new program that you want to put together, the first step that we um, outlined and, and shared with you that we advise is writing out in narrative form the story of your ideal client discovering you, discovering your program, signing up, going through the whole program from start to finish and everything going swimmingly, as you would imagine it should. Um, write out that narrative in the first person. Um, so like I came across so and so I was hesitant at first, but when I saw they addressed X, Y, and Z on the website, I felt better about it and moved forward. I signed up, but ooh, I hate signing up for new things. The welcome email laying out exactly what to expect helped me feel better about that all the way through, um, why they came to you, what their major challenge was that they want, want to overcome. Try to explain all that in, in their own words. And I'm not going to go fully deep into it this time. You can refer back to last week's video, but that first person piece is going to pay off. Um, I assure you as you get deeper into this. So if you go to our website, click on resources at the top, go into past office hours, you can see last week's recording, see why we did it in first person. But we ended up with a concise, hopefully outline of our program and how we want it to flow based on that ideal client story that we wrote out from start to finish. So once you have that outline, even once you have that kind of succinct outline and you're like, gosh, this, this is it. I've got this outlined. I'm making pro great progress here. We can still come to a very daunting moment. And that's where this episode comes in, which is where to find the content for your program to continue to carry that forward. So you've got the outline and Oftentimes, an outline can become a to-do list. There's very little difference between those two things, right? You see, if you've outlined your program, you see a list of bullets, 
you can imagine very easily the checkboxes next to them and the reaction is, oh shit, I have to create all of this, right? Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. And that's the number one message that I want to get across today is that just because you have this outline mapped out and it seems like it might be a totally new program to you, if you're an expert on this topic that you're guiding people through, if you've talked about this in the past, there's a very strong chance you have a good chunk of the content to go deeper into these topics within the program that that you'll need to build out the, the whole program. There's a very good chance you have it somewhere already. And your job is just going to become finding it, pulling it, and curating it into that outline that you've already created. So again, I am assuming that you've been gone through the exercise from, from last week. Um, but if you haven't, don't worry about that. Just check it out, check it out after, after we talk today. So stick with me through this and then refer back to last week's after this. But we've got our outline. We're just dropping now our content in so that we don't think we have to create it all from scratch. Again, even though it's a new program, you know this stuff. You've taught it before. Now, just think about where your content lives. This is the next obvious question. We're not creating, we're not thinking about creating anything from scratch yet. We're thinking our mindset is, I know this stuff. I've talked about this stuff. I've created stuff for this before. How can I just curate that into my outline? So all we're going to do is find the right places, grab those pieces of information and start dropping links to it into that outline. That's the goal for today. Um, so couple of places to, to start looking. You're probably imagining already where you might go, where you might look, but let me just help you take that leap if you're not feeling particularly imaginative today. So um, one, for if you're like us, for example, we started our business writing about what we were doing. So almost everything that we've ever talked about is somewhere on our blog in some written form. So if you have a blog, and you've ever talked about the topic that your program is on. Go to your blog, scroll through, look at those topics. If you have search for your blog, search through. Um, and you can very quickly identify, okay, these posts are relevant. Um, and then you can go in and start, start pulling from those. Um, very similar thing if you're, if you're like, man, I've never been a writer, but you know, I, I record some videos or I record some podcasts. Same thing, pop over to YouTube. Uh, if you have a YouTube channel, Vimeo, whatever, wherever you keep your videos, um, go through. Um, search, search relevant keywords and identify those pieces. Pull, the, pull links for those, drop them into your outline. And I'm gonna go into this in more detail, by the way, and give you just a strategy that I use to kind of curate and, and copy things and move them around for my own notes. Um, but you know, I want you all to, to do it in the way that you're comfortable as well. So I will give you specifics, but at a high level, you just need to get, I identify this content, find where it lives already and drop it into the right place. Later on, you can worry about how it needs to be tweaked or whether you need to re-record or whatever. Um, but the idea here is that you already have a vast majority of what you'll need. Um, another great place. So another, another fairly obvious one, by the way, before I go too fast, PDFs, any, any written resources that you have in the past, especially if you're on in, you know, I see this a lot, especially in like nutrition. Um, but even in like leadership, coaching, things that are uh, coaches that are working in organizations. Um, I see this a lot where you have like saved out PDF content that, you know, you're used to sending or maybe even a booklet that you're, that you send as part of your programming in the past. Um, don't be afraid to pull, pull that out, go through it, highlight what you need and start saving that into your outline as well. All of these are going to be great resources for you. And the last one and the most underrated, and this is according to Sarah. So, you know, it's good. Um, so if you've worked with clients on this topic before, which I would imagine you have, if you're creating this program, the least worked with somebody on, on this topic, you probably have quite a few old emails or communications of some kind where you're addressing questions around these topics. So the, the search tools in some inboxes are better than others, I acknowledge. But for example, I, you know, we use uh, Google Apps. 
um, as a company. If I go in and search for the right things in my inbox, um, I could quickly find, for example, an email I've sent on time management advice um, and just copy that out, drop it into my notebook, and then drop a link to that note into my outline. So old emails are super underrated. That's content you've created that you don't need to recreate. And we all spend far too much time on email probably. So it's time to make that payback for us, right? Let's win back our time with all that email that we've done in the past. It's time to, time to flip the tables on, on the email time suck here. So blog, podcast, videos, pod, uh, I already said podcasts, uh, PDFs, and your old emails. Go through all of those. And as you go through your outline, okay, this topic, let me do some searches for that. Just start dropping in in bullets links to those items. So that's it. That's how you curate yourself. So instead of asking yourself up front, how am I going to create all this content? Start by curating yourself. Um, a guy named David Peril, who runs a site called Write a Passage, uh, it's a, a very high, um, um, high ticket um, writing program, basically how to write online um, effectively. He calls this um, creating from abundance. Basically the idea of it's really hard to write from scratch without a bunch of stuff already in front of you. So if you, if you think about you know, what you've already created and start to curate it, it gives you some abundance to, to start from. This is kind of our version, our program creation version of that. So um, if you want to check that out more, check out Rite of Passage, David Peril, P-E-R-R-E-L-L, -L, I think. Um, pretty useful resource. Love his newsletter, by the way. Um, okay, so let me show you a quick example of just how I would grab some stuff. Um, so I, one thing I use that I think is incredibly useful and this will, again, um, the stuff I've already gone over is the most important part. This is just specifically how I do stuff to give you guys an idea. Um, I use an app called matter. This is relatively new. Um, but apps like this have been around for a while. Whoops. I'm sure that looks strange to you now. Um, so matter is basically just a way to, you know, capture all of the stuff that you actually want to take in and read. Um, so I use it to kind of keep track of my, all my newsletters kind of go in there that I'm subscribed to that I care about only the ones that I always want to read. Um, but I can send stuff to matter from, um, like my blog or anything like that really easily and use it to highlight and save to my notes. And that's why I use it for this type of exercise too. So if you've ever heard of, for example, Instapaper, very similar app, the idea is you're kind of saving stuff to read later. Um, but I, I use Matter myself. And so, for example, with their web extension, I could just go to our blog, you know, filter through all the stuff, you know, maybe personal coaching, that sounds interesting. COVID, no, that's not a topic for me. Uh, onboarding, no, partnerships. Um, uh, how about that? How to create a new coaching program from scratch. So if I just wanted to grab that and save it to matter, I could go ahead and save that. And so that's gonna go into my app. And I actually read a lot on my phone, which you can call me crazy for doing. Um, but I just find that experience helpful. So that's going to save that into that app so that later on I can go in and read that, highlight it. And once I, once I do that in matter, I can export all my notes into what I use for note taking. And what I use for note taking is not something fancy. It is one note. <laughs> so you can use, you know, Notion, you can use uh, Apple Notes, there are a thousand note taking apps. Um, so, you know, use what you're comfortable with. But this is an example of what would get pumped out. I was reading an article from Anne-Laure LeConf on um, managing time, energy and attention, basically productivity framework. And so I saved out my notes um, from my Matter app and it looked like this, gave me a link and all that good stuff. Um, now let's say, you know, for, for the purposes of, of this exercise, I want to grab, let's say this is all about, um, kind of my follow up on, on those notes on productivity. And I want to save this out to the outline I created. I'm just going to right click that and copy this link to this page and I will go over 
to back into my browser. So I've got my little outline here. I'll just save that. And so I've got that little note and that is, just label it really quick. This is from my notes. And so I do that. And then, you know, maybe I wanted to go ahead and grab that full article from the website, save that for later. Um, so I just grab that. And again, this is the next piece that I want to include. Um, so right now I'm just collecting all the content that's going to be useful references for um, my program as I build out my outline. Again, my, my ideal client story is written out up here. I have my outline that's taken shape below. Um, and now I'm just filling it in with, with my additional um, content that I already have that I'm curating. So that's essentially my process to get from zero blank page to got my ideal client in mind. I've written my outline and now I'm dropping in the content that I already have so I don't have to create it all from scratch. Um, so there's a handful of steps to get you started. Now, I am sure that, um, you know, some of you are thinking, well, I'm not going to just have all of the content already. Um, you know, what are some other places that I could, I could look, how could I, how could I continue to kind of accumulate content? And one question I get on this a lot is, you know, how should I cite outside sources, especially if I want to literally include some of their stuff. And I, and most of all, like most, most of the coaches that we talk to uh, program creators are, are comfortable with doing that when it's text and linking out to those articles. And that's totally fine. But this gets a little bit more dicey when we think about like video, if we want to like include a clip from someone else's YouTube channel, for example. Um, so that's, that's just a question that comes up a lot. So I wanted to address it really quick and standard notice here. I'm not an attorney. So, you know, do your research on this, um, ask someone for further input. If you know, you want to make sure that everything is fine. Um, there are a couple of things to consider. Um, you'll hear about quote fair use guidelines. That's sort of the, the category, uh, of law that we're worried about here. Um, so, you know, the safest thing to do, of course, is to reach out and ask, um, that creator, if, if you can use, say something from their YouTube video. That's obviously the best and easiest thing to do when that's possible. Sometimes, you know, they might not get back to you, something like that. So there might come, some challenges might come up in that, that process. Um, but some things that are important when including video from other sources and programming and anything that you're selling, um, make sure to interpret it somehow. So don't just copy it, don't just duplicate it. Um, you have to add value there um, to make it your own. Again, we have to attribute uh, attribute everything to them um, and think about everything uh, from that perspective to make sure we're not cutting corners. So ask, interpret, and some, some things that you actually can pull um, a little bit more freely, just so you know, are a category of things called commonly known facts. So this would be like, let's say you're pulling like specific information on like magnesium or something like that in a diet, just as an example, like if they're, if they're just considered like solid commonly known facts and you're pulling it from an educational video, there's a little bit less red tape involved in something like that. You can cite that a little bit more confidently without worrying about having someone protest that use of their content. So that's something to keep in mind. What is actually easier to do, I think, is actually go out of your way to search for something called a Creative Commons license, which lays out specific terms for how that comment content can be used. So if I create a YouTube video, I can publish it on YouTube with like under a Creative Commons license. And that basically gives someone the right to reuse it, essentially. Um, so something that you can do if that's going to be something that's that's uh you're going to want to use let me make sure i'm sharing my screen again here get to my browser um if you want to search specifically just under this creative commons license yeah you look at this url at the top oldsearch.creativecommons.org 
Um, and let's say I wanted to search, you know, YouTube videos for magnesium uh, diet. Sure. So I'm a nutritionist for some reason in this example. That's going to pull up. Oh, cool. Straight in YouTube, a bunch of videos that are published under a Creative Commons license. Um, so if you go into those videos, you can scroll down and see more details on that license. Um, so, you know, look deeper, make sure that you understand it fully, but that's a quick way to find those. Um, just within YouTube itself, if I'm just on uh, YouTube and let's say I'm doing the same search, uh, so I could search magnesium. Now I can go to the filters here and Creative Commons is actually a filter that's featured there. So I can just click on that and that's gonna do essentially the same thing. So now I've filtered out specifically things that are published under that Creative Commons license, which again is just gonna make it easier on me to understand how I can use the clips from those videos. Again, still kind of the gold standard here, reach out, make sure you have permission. Um, always attribute whether you've asked or not, <laughs> whether you've taken much or not, um, link to them, explain where it came from, um, and you know, do all that within the content of, of what you're putting out there. But you absolutely can use content from other sources. You just have to do it in the right way. And those are simple ways to think about it. It's not everything you need to know. So keep in mind, consult whoever you need to consult um, to make sure you're doing this the right way. But those are kind of the high level steps that I go through as someone who curates content on a regular basis. So um, keep that in mind. So as I do that, I can grab again these videos. Again, continue to just drop out those links um, as they become relevant within your outline here. What you're going to end up with is now a full outline with references to specific pieces of content. So you're not looking at that outline anymore and thinking, oh my God, how am I going to create all this content? You're going to have all that you need listed there. And now you just need to make edits to it as you go through it. And you can start to build that out um, into the platform itself. And that's where we're going to be going over the next couple of weeks is how to think about starting taking something from outline form into cards and into sequences and into something that you can feel good about as a fully ready to launch program. So that's next. Um, so I hope you guys stick around or keep attending every Tuesday at noon. We're here at the same time, same channel. Um, Catherine, do you have any notes today? Any, anything? <laughs> no, I was just uh, I'm taking it all in. I learned some things too. Um, but if anyone does have any questions, please, please fire them our way. I recognize all these names. So I know you guys know how to use the chat when you've got, <laughs> got questions. Um, but yeah, no, thanks, Bill. That was Really interesting. <laughs> Absolutely. Hope it was helpful. Um, again, if you think of a question right after we get off here, um, respond to any of the emails I send out. I'm yeah. a human being with an email. I actually respond to emails. So <laughs> just a note. Um, love the questions. Those help me actually create more useful content in the future. Because why not? Of course, we want to do that. Um, okay. Otherwise, next Tuesday, we'll get further into this process systematic approach for creating your own programs. Again, you'll learn a lot that will help you add to programs, um, tweak programs, all that good stuff. But uh, we're taking it step by step for you guys. Um, so look out for updates on the next couple of office hours, actually, since I know those haven't been published yet. Um, so we'll get that information out soon. But thank you all for sticking with us through that. Um, and yeah, look, look forward to seeing you again next week. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Bill.